Hi, this is Justin Malia speaking, and this is a short presentation for the Art Association of Australia and New Zealand, sharing a brief summary of my PhD research on the city of Sabaudia in Italy. In 1935, Benito Mussolini remarked that it is absurd not to want a rational and functional architecture for our times. Each epoch has produced its own architecture. Some have criticised Sabaudia, but I tell you that Sabaudia is fine for me and I think it is beautiful. This is what a city of the 12th year of the fascist era should look like, and it should not be done differently. My research places Sabaudia within its historical, architectural, cultural and political contexts, thoroughly recovering and cataloguing original architectural material, along with new investigation and production of drawings, photographs and theories, focusing on the legacy of hauntology and heterotopic space in the built reality of an idealistically imagined future that did not come to pass as intended. Described as death-inducing, throughout history the Pontine marshes were a vast area flooded in winter, infested with malaria-carrying mosquitoes in summer, and only ever intermittently occupied by poor working families. Roman Emperor Augustus was legendarily acclaimed for the drainage of a small portion of the marshes and their conversion into seemingly miraculously productive agricultural land, however all later reclamation attempts had failed. Along with the opportunity to promote himself as a Latter-day Augustus, the reclamation of the Pontine Marshes became a focus of Mussolini's ambition for the re ruralization of Italian society and production, expressed in slogans such as the Battle for Wheat and the War Against Hunger. From 1932 onwards, peasant war veterans were forcibly relocated from other parts of Italy to undertake the manual reclamation labour, and after the successful draining of the swamp, were settled in 4,000 individual land holdings, each with a pre designed farmhouse located within a network of small local towns and five major agricultural centres, one of which is Sabaudia. Designed as part of a complete system of social and agricultural support services, Sabaudia was associated with the fascist themes of work, dedication to and sacrifice for the state, and the eulogisation of Italian tradition and identity. Inaugurated in 1934 and completed in only 253 days, Sabaudia was designed by a group of young modernist architects in a rigorously rationalist, rationalist style. The principal features of the urban layout are two long straight access roads that lead on intersecting axes directly to the city centre, which is dominated by a civic tower visible for kilometres in all directions. An arrangement of principal and secondary towers, piazzas, colonnades and civic buildings are positioned in dynamic ensemble of asymmetries. The civic buildings are set in careful relation to the main tower and one another, establishing hierarchies of space and multiple vistas to features both within the city and the surrounding natural setting. In contrast to the original architect's placement of Sabaudia within the totalitarian scope of fascist doctrine, and claims regarding the invention of the rural centre as a new type of fascist city, Terry Kirk has identified resemblances in its layout to ancient Roman military settlements, and D. Medina Lazansky has noted similar similarities to medieval and Renaissance civic building typologies and urban planning principles. Manfredo Tafuri has suggested that instead of being a new organisation of the various parts of a city and their relationship to the territory, Sabaudia is an organism grafted together from historical traditions of layout, building types and compositional canons. Notwithstanding the political circumstances in which it was conceived, in the 1960s, Sabaudia attracted notable anti-fascist intellectuals such as Alberto Moravia and Pier Paolo Pasolini, who resided in the city. In 1972, Pasolini remarked that in Sabaudia, the passing of the years has meant that this architecture of fascist character assumes a character between metaphysical and realistic, that is, it reminds of Giorgio de Chirico's metaphysical painting. De Chirico's principal metaphysical works were painted prior to the 1922 March on Rome by the fascist black shirts, and his works do not correspond with fascism. However, as Pasolini and others have noted, there is a strong semblance between the architectural settings in De Chirico's metaphysical works and the architectural atmosphere of Sabaudia, constructed about 30 years later. Thomas Meikle describes De Chirico's metaphysical paintings as establishing architecture as the scene of the appearance and disappearance of its own history and function as musings on the unknowable origins of architecture. In these works, specific remembered classical forms are situated in the anxious spaces of modernity, repositioning architecture as a disquieting subject matter 
and transgressing the traditional representations of architecture as knowable, measurable, and reactive to context and chronology. De Chirico's painted architecture is not as it appears. It is deliberately enigmatic. The persistent, ap persistent appearance of the architectural exerts a disruptive effect on the viewer, offering a dreamlike vision of a convulsive urbanism that is both familiar and uncanny. Drawing upon Sigmund Freud's analysis of Das Heimlich and Unheimlich, which are usually translated as the bond between the homely and unhomely, Anthony Vidler describes the architectural uncanny as the haunting of architectural space at an interface between the contrasts of familiar security and the anxiety provoked by a fearful presence of an entity not quite at home in its own home. Today, the built fabric of Sabaudia in its unadorned rationalist style is remarkably well preserved. Fascist symbols are discreetly encountered throughout the experience of the city, such as those cast on drainage pit covers and lamp posts. But a powerful reminder of fascism is through its apparent relevant, relative absence. Similarly, de Chirico's representations of spaces are fundamentally empty, but include figures of the body which are represented as absent bodies, phantasms, statues and fragmented bodies. In varied ways, these nondescript bodies do not appear to dwell but haunt de Chirico's paintings, leaving their traces in space before they arrive or after they have departed. Faceless and uncanny, they are the enigmatic origin of his metaphysical vision. Comparatively, in Sabaudia, the enigma is a simultaneous, innocuous presence and overt absence of fascism. This is prevalent in architectural memory markers, such as the way the existent lectern balcony on the main civic tower recalls the potency of the representation of the body of Mussolini through its absence. This formidable the, the, the formidable design skills of the city's architects drawing upon long-standing Italian traditions in society, architecture, and urban design, results in a city that today is democratically governed, efficient, well-functioning, vibrant, and inspiring, simultaneously reflecting the aspirations of the modernist movement while based in the reinterpreted familiarity of classicism, the medieval, and the Renaissance. However, as a De Chirico painting has the capacity to convey, in parallel, the city is also enig enigmatic, heterotopic, unhomely, unsettling, and uncanny. Thank you.